Welcome back to Sunrise Meditations on the beautiful and serene Enders Island. Today is Tuesday of the 13th week in Ordinary Time, and I'm your host, Deacon Francis Valier. Our Lexio Divina, our divine reading, is from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 8, verses 23 through 27. Let us begin our prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. And now let us listen and attend to our scripture passage. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. As Jesus got into a boat, his disciples followed him. Suddenly a violent storm came up on the sea, so that the boat was being swamped by waves. But he was asleep. They came and woke him, saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. He said to them, Why are you terrified, O you of little faith? Then he got up, rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was great calm. The men were amazed and said, What sort of man is this, whom even the winds and the sea obey? The Gospel of the Lord. Through the words of the Gospel, may our sins be wiped away. In today's Gospel reading, according to St. Matthew, we find Jesus in the boat with the disciples. As they crossed the lake, a storm suddenly blew up. While waves crashed into the boat, Jesus remained fast asleep. In great fear, the disciples woke him. Lord, save us, we are lost. Jesus was not very sympathetic. (laughs) Where is your courage? How little faith you have. And he stood up and rebuked the wind and the sea. There immediately followed a complete calm. The disciples were awestruck and in a way, we're more afraid than ever. A storm they could understand, but not what they saw Jesus doing. Wow, what sort of man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him? In their understanding, only one person could have this kind of power, God himself. Their question contained its own answer. It was a further step in their realization of just who Jesus, their master, really was. We can, however, read another meaning into this story. We can understand it as a kind of a parable about the early church, the church for which Matthew was writing. Of course, we know it to be factual, but it can be also understood as a parable. It was a church consisting of many small scattered communities or churches. They were surrounded by large pagan and often very hostile people. Each little church community must have felt like those disciples in the boat with Jesus, surrounded by a large expanse of water. Sometimes that water got very angry and threatened to engulf their boat. At the same time, Jesus, their Lord, seemed to be very far away. He seemed to be asleep, unaware, and uncaring of their plight. The fact that in the gospel today they address him as Lord would indicate that the story points more to their present situation as an isolated community in a very uncertain world then they would come to realize that Jesus really was with them and that he did care for them an awful lot. And peace would come back to them again. But 
the peace would be in their hearts. The sea around them might be just as stormy as ever. And that exists today. This is something for all of us to learn. Most of the time, we can do very little to change the world around us or to change the people who bother us, who are against us, who maybe even hate us. Maybe we have no right to make them change. But we can change. We can learn to see things in a different way. We can learn to be proactive instead of reactive. Above all, we can learn to be aware that God is close to us at all times. He is with us, Emmanuel. That he does know, that he does care, and that instead of taking storms away, he helps us to go through those storms. And he helps us keep our peace. Something to ponder. As usual, after our closing prayer, we read this scripture passage again. Contemplate its message and concentrate on a thought that the Holy Spirit places in your heart. This can be either through a verse or even just a small word from this scripture passage. Then ask the Holy Spirit to show you how it pertains to you. And more importantly, how you may spiritually grow in imitation of Jesus. Fulfilling the will of our Heavenly Father. Let us complete a divine reading with a closing prayer. And let us pray. Governed by your Holy Spirit, we pray, O Lord, those who contemplate and embrace your divine word, that in professing you, not just in words, but also in works and in spirit and in truth, we may merit to enter the kingdom of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Jesus be upon you always and in always. And may his generous blessings fill your day with joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you enjoy listening to these daily meditations, please click the thumbs up button. And if you haven't already done so, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And click on the notification button, the bell icon, so you don't miss the new meditations that come to you each and every day. And please help support our channel by sharing these links with others. Pass them along to your friends and relatives as well. God bless you all. Have a great day. And join us again tomorrow for another Lexio Divina, a divine reading of God's sacred word. Pax et bonum omnibus. Peace and blessings to all.